The speaker tonight is Jackie Calderon Pearl. She's a second year Masters of Public Policy student at the Goldman School. She's currently doing her advanced policy analysis, her summary capstone project, on trying to solve the problem of chronic absenteeism in schools. Uh, this is a problem that has two faces to it. Uh, on the one hand, it's certainly a problem for the students who don't come to school because obviously that has a great impact on, on their learning and reduces their ability to move forward uh, with their education. The second thing is, is that for school districts, it means that they can't actually get the money that comes attached to those students uh, because the student has to be realistically and reasonably uh, in the school for them to collect the money. So solving this problem can both help do a better job of educating students and do a better job of funding our public schools. Uh, she's doing this project with the Youth Ventures Joint Powers Authority, which is Oakland's public sector collective impact body. Uh, Jackie has worked as a teacher, as a principal, and she consults on numerous projects aimed at aligning public, private, nonprofit, and community partners in service of obtaining better life outcomes for Oakland's youth. Uh, so she's doing extraordinarily important work, and I'd like to welcome to the stage Jackie Calderon Pearl. Come on up. Good to have you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Good evening. Thank you, Dean Brady, for that warm introduction. Uh, I'm honored to have the opportunity to speak to you, all of you here tonight, and I feel privileged to be representing my class, the Goldman School's MVP class of 2019. Yeah, just a few weeks away from graduation. I can't believe it. Uh, so this evening, I'd like to share with you how I came to the Goldman School, what I'm taking away from the experience, and what lies ahead for me. Uh, the story of how I came to the Goldman School really starts long ago. Uh, I am a first-generation American. My father left El Salvador when, uh, the, when at the outbreak of the Civil War. And my mother left Cuba in the early 70s. Uh, my father had little in the way of an education, and my mother dropped out of high school years before I was born, um, later to return to earn her GED at an adult school where I would attend with her in the summer months and help women in their 30s and 40s uh, learn their multiplication facts. And I'd practice my keyboarding alongside them. Um, our early years were shaky. Uh, my mother was forced to raise us on her own. Uh, so we experienced many moves and uh, were exposed to less than ideal circumstances. Uh, but we were fortunate to not get into many of the troubles that a lot of our relatives or close friends were consumed by. And for the latter, I credit my mother, who was protective and loving and attentive. But also, I, I credit the fact that I found sanctuary in education. It was something I was good at, it made me feel powerful, and it was one of the few things during that time of my life that I could control. So it, it's that those experiences with adversity juxtaposed with the joys of learning and success that place schooling squarely at the center of my universe. So I was able to maintain my, acad my academic trajectory, and I was accepted to several CSUs and UCs, and I decided on UC Santa Barbara, uh, mainly because it was a short two-hour drive to Los Angeles, where my family lived, but also because my college advisor at the time said it'd be a good fit. Um, I soon learned through the culture shock that I experienced that <laughs> most of the people around me had a very life experience up until that point. Um, but despite that, I fell in love with being an undergrad and immersed myself in my studies. So I spent the next six years discovering the history of my relatives and my ancestors in Latin America, thinking critically about race and power and privilege, and understanding how it had and would continue to have an impact on the rest of my life. I decided it was time to reconnect with my community, and I wanted to embark on the work that I now understood needed to be done. So I joined Teach for America. Uh, hoping that I'd be sent back to the communities where I was raised. And instead, I was placed at a struggling school in East Oakland, where a short six years later, I would take the helm as the principal. I can honestly say that I've yet to experience anything as rewarding as those years serving my community directly, but it was also the most exhausting thing I've ever done. I understood how critical strong leadership was and how great of an impact I could have had if I had 
continue that really hard work, but I was feeling completely burned out. Uh, I was anxious, angry, often depressed, and I knew I needed to step away. I knew that I needed to reset, reflect, reassess my strategy. Uh, the work I was doing just didn't feel right. It, it felt too hard for me, for my teachers, for my students. So I looked for systems level positions. I looked at jobs with the school district, partner education organizations, trying to find ways to lift systemic barriers to the critical work that was educating our most marginalized students. The most seemingly impactful positions felt daunting. I knew that I could run a school, but I didn't feel qualified to make decisions about people's lives that would impact them at scale. So I needed to expand my skill set, and the Goldman School offered that. So in practical terms, I came to the Goldman School because I wanted to learn how to make informed decisions using large data sets, lots of information, to make the best decisions possible for the people that I'd serve. And I can say that the Goldman School has given me that and more through its rigorous core in economics and statistics and the various toolkit classes I've taken over the past two years. I've developed new approaches to defining large-scale problems and identifying efficient and effective solutions to some of those complex challenges. But most importantly, I leave the Goldman School with a renewed sense of hope that things can get better. From the amazing faculty that work relentlessly to inspire new ways of thinking about tough and divisive issues, to my amazing classmates who are ambitious and measured and good-natured, I can breathe, breathe easier knowing that I'm part of a team of change makers with a drive and expertise to get things done. I can't say I was feeling that way after eight years in the public sector with working in a system that lacked resources and just really wasn't doing what it's intended to do. But now I'm encouraged knowing that every year the Goldman School will prepare a new cadre of data-informed, highly technical, bleeding heart champions for progress and justice. <laughs> like myself. From environmental stewards to criminal justice reformers to safety net innovators, I know that the GSPP faculty, my classmates, and alumni to follow will march alongside me um, in this good fight. As for this next chapter in my career, in the next few months I hope to finish up a project that I've been working on with the Harvard's Education Redesign Lab, a partnership between the Oakland Schools and Salesforce.org that aims at helping schools and communities leverage their data to find the hidden potential to better serve their students and families. Beyond that, I hope to take on a systems level position where I can use data to inform strategic planning, to, to uh, evaluate the impact of our policies and our programs. I also see myself pursuing a local political career. Uh, career. I want to find ways to bring progressive ideas to communities who maybe aren't there yet or lack the resources or technical expertise. Regardless of where I end up, I'm glad to be embarking on this next phase of my career with a new set of skills, greater confidence, and a network that I can call on to move this work forward. I owe many thanks to the great faculty at the Goldman School and my wonderful peers, and to all of you for the opportunity to tell my story here tonight. Thank you.